I've been on a quest to make the most wholesome and cozy scratch game for the last few months. This partly comes from the fact that I just love cute little games. I mean, who doesn't? And partly because I have zero extra free time with me working on my Metroidvania, Dewdrop Dynasty, which you can wishlist on Steam. And with this lack of free time, I've realized scratch is true superpower. It's the superpower to create fun little games in literally minutes. And with the autumn quickly approaching, no free time to spare, what better time than the present to make yet another adorable scratch game. So let's jump in. That's that's a pun, as we'll see in a second. For a long time, I've been wanting to make a game that's in the style of Blobby Volley. It's a game that came out back in the early 2000s. It was on Windows. I personally played it on Linux. And there's something about these multicolored congealed blobs that just makes me happy. Maybe it's the tropical setting, or maybe, just maybe, it's the loud, annoying whistle that I hear every time the AI scores on me. But one thing that's missing from this game is frogs, and I'm gonna fix that. So with my completely original idea in hand, I was ready to start jumping into scratch and sc scratching. All right, move on, move on. I start off by giving the player the ability to walk left and right and jump, and it works. And then I redid it so it actually worked, you know, like a little bit better, so you, you can actually jump. Then after that, it was pretty easy to make a second player. Look, these guys jump around, they just cheer me up inside. And it was at this point, it was time for me to tackle the hardest part of the whole entire game, and that's making the ball physics. Yes, it doesn't seem like much, but in Scratch, it's a nightmare. I'm not even gonna try to pretend that I spent forever trying to figure this out. And I just wanna give a shout out to the real MVP of this video, and that's Gruppy for making an awesome Blobby Volley game for me to study, so thank you. So after I stole, I mean studied how to make the ball mechanic, I was quickly able to add the collisions so that the players could hit the ball. Now please ignore the fact that the ball has a mind of its own and it's deadly, that will be fixed later on. And at this point I felt like we had enough to start diving into the artwork, which is personally my favorite part. So I booted up my favorite malware, Adobe Illustrator, and I got started creating a mock-up for what the game would look like. And I feel like my end result almost feels like Hello Kitty meets Smash Brothers, I don't know. After that I exported the SVGs and I started importing them into Scratch. Other than the crazy, unwieldy ball mechanics, the game was already starting to feel pretty complete. But trust me, we got some ways to go. I added some shadows under the frogs, so it felt like they were grounded on the beach. I, that's how shadows work. And I also added this to the ball as well, because the ball goes off screen, and you kind of need to know where it's going to land, so it was a nice little indicator. And of course, it can't be a beach scene without there being some waves, so I animated the waves with a little sign, and I, th I think it looks nice. It was around this time I decided to add some sounds, some ocean ambience. I wanted there to be frog croaking randomly just so it kind of sets the mood though I have to say this this one was a little cursed I had them into the game and I kind of randomized the sound so it wasn't the same thing over again okay that's a little okay can you please stop okay all right thank you I also made it when you jump you hit the volleyball or the ball hits the ground it has some sounds as well so it just feels that much more juicy now speaking of juiciness not being able to see the ball is not juicy so I jump back into illustrator and create this arrow and I implement in the game so it just whenever the ball's off screen it just shows you where the, the ball's at. At this point, it was getting pretty tricky to tell who's player one and player two, so I made these little indicators, and they're definitely not inspired by Smash Bros at all. I also wanted to kind of differentiate the two frogs because every frog's unique, you know, and so I just want to express that. So player two frog is a little bit more yellowish green because maybe he was a swamp frog. I don't know. Okay, enough polish for now. It's probably smart if I actually finish the scoring system as that's kind of important for this sport. So I create a custom font and I import it into Scratch. I don't know why, but this always seems like the most time-consuming part of Scratch. After that, I applied the scoring system so it actually keeps track of score. Then I created a win screen so that someone could actually win and the game didn't go on forever. As with every game I work on, there's always things that I want to add, but I just run out of time. Some of those things were adding AI and also hats that you can unlock. I don't know why, it just frogs with hats. Feels like, it feels like a good combination. Check it out, play it, and if you like it, maybe, maybe you can add those features. Who knows? And more or less, that's kind of it. This game didn't really revolutionize anything whatsoever, but oddly enough, I think I just enjoyed the polishing so much. Even the little details of like the frog's face scrunching up when it gets hit, or the subtle sound design, or even the ready, set, go. I mean, it just it just feels good. And I don't know, there's just something so charming about two frogs on the beach enjoying their last days of summer before the cozy autumn comes. Now, if you want to start learning how to program, you want to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.
Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational advanced math to programming, AI, neural networks, and more, with new lessons being added each month. And their interactive lessons have been proven to be six times more effective than passive learning, like just watching random lecture videos. Being able to see what you're learning is really important for engaging with concepts. And Brilliant storytelling makes abstract ideas actually relatable. One course I really like is Computer Science Fundamentals. It basically is Programmers 101. It helps with decision making, writing programs and algorithms. It's fantastic and I highly recommend it. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, there is a 30-day free trial. All you have to do is visit brilliant.org slash goodgifts or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And I just want to say thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel and my game dev journey. And speaking of which, my studio Firth is actually hosting our fourth annual Cozy Autumn Game Jam. It starts September 23rd and goes for three weeks. It's super chill and something I look for to every year, so come on over and join. Anywho, Froggy Volley was just a blast to work on. I just got lost in all the little details, and it's so fun to just make it a polished experience and something so quick. And honestly, if you want to get into games and you want to make games quickly and prototype, I think Scratch is a wonderful tool, and it's why I keep coming back to it. Anywho, that's all I have for this video, but I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.